Hey guys, how's it going? So today I just wanted to talk briefly about this uh, new, well it's not new, but it is was released recently. Mini Max M1. It's basically an open source model, but it's really new, so there's no gut for it. Um, it is pretty big. It is uh, multimodal. It is one of my favorite ones, like the old one was one of my favorite ones. Old one was Mini Max. Uh, zero one and the special thing about it is in the long context length um, a lot of benchmarks these days don't really cover the quality of a model going you know into 200,000 400,000 tokens um, just because usually you get you want an answer within like the first probably 5,000 tokens or something so uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, AI models just kind of go haywire after like around 60,000 tokens. Even the bigger ones, let's say DeepSeq R1, DeepSeq, they just go haywire once you approach that limit. And uh, even though they say they have 100k token context length, you can't, it's not really usable. Um, I've in the past couple of weeks, all I've been doing is extensively basically testing each model um, in a silly tavern in a chat, uh, just continuously chatting with them and then trying to figure out can they recall the past information. I know silly tavern has summarizing features and you know, etc. vector graphs, but without those, um, I've just been trying to see can they actually uh, pull through the information from prior information. So let's say you want a textbook, you put it in, you have, or you have like large code base and you want to uh, recall what you did at the start. Um, that gets filled up really fast, unfortunately. And that's most of the reasons why these models, like they cannot do a lot of uh, functional things. Sometimes you get uh, hallucinations, you get a lot of loss quality. Um, but let's just jump back into this one, why it's my favorite one does have a linear attention over the context length that means it is still pretty good at that you know 600k context window as it is at around 100k um, there is some benchmarks I'll just hide myself a bit here are some benchmarks on their um, github and it's just showing that the mini max is in red obviously and then you know you got let's say deep seek v3 which is my second favorite one DCP30324. I don't know if it's the out version or the older one. Uh, but they are pretty much close enough. Again, DeepSeek is a large model at 650 um, billion parameters, whereas, mm. don't quote me on it, but like uh, more than 600 billion parameters. And this one is 456. They are both uh, MOE models, so DeepSeek and this one is our MOE, but the DeepSeek. Uh, MOE are smaller. That means there are more. Uh, there are more kind of like brain clusters than this one. This one has only twelve experts. I believe DeepSeek has. Or sorry, this one has ten. Uh, I think DeepSeek has twelve. Anyway, um, the main point about it is just the context window, which is one million, right? So this one can support one million tokens. In length does have a basically a lightning attention network um, and these are just benchmarks showing that over a long course of uh, text you can potentially get better results with this model versus uh, other models and so what I've been basically using this one for is um, summarizing uh, making sure that I get the uh, summary uh, down. So let's say you got 400k context window or something, like a huge book. If you want a quick summary, obviously you're not going to be able to use uh, DeepSeek on that. Um, so you can use this one, give a brief summary, um, maybe 14 pages or something, and then have another model go through it if you really like another one. But this one's pretty good, obviously. This 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 is the this is the new one. It's pretty good. All right. The other thing I wanted to mention was that they do have a website now. Let's transition now over to their new website. Um, they have 
open up a website to just uh, putting all of their tools together. Again, they do have a GitHub with uh, all of these tools. They have like a video generation by Hualu. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly. They have a speech uh, and then I have the MCP server. So this is the website basically putting it all together. Most of us cannot uh, run this locally. Hopefully in the future we will be able to. But uh, they did basically put it all together and you can access it here. Uh, it's going to cost you money if, just like ChatGPT, unfortunately. But I just wanted to go over that they do have a website to try this out. Uh, don't put any personal information, please. Then uh, they have the chat agent and basically this chat agent does have search functionality and thinking functionality, uh, same as uh, GPT-4 and Google uh, and all like basically the other ones. I just wanted to go over some of the ways that it uh, talks. One, it does search quite a lot. Uh, a lot more than let's say 4.0 and it is uh, a lot slower. So uh, it did think for 52 seconds, it went through 30 references uh, when I asked it, how do I you recover a Google password? Uh, but it did lay out the answer quite well uh, based on what I think. Uh, I think most of it, they might've copied GPT-4's formatting Whereas you have the title and then the quick answer, they do have references to the website that they used to get this sentence. Uh, it does hallucinate a bit, but not as badly as Google. What I've seen, um, let's say here is an example. A couple times what I did was I just put in large contacts window chats that I had and then um, I believe Quen, Quen was pretty good. It told me, no, I'm sorry. DeepSeek told me that it could read only 60% of the file. And it indicated that, uh, that it can only summarize 60% when I put pasted the same file into Quen, uh, Quen, it did not tell me this. So maybe their main website didn't say that their context link, uh, window was full, uh, when I gave that, um, and then basically did know most of the file anyway. Uh, and when I gave it here, obviously it could read the full file, uh, which was probably around like 200k, maybe 250k tokens. So yeah, so this is another question, basically just asking what is NAN? I do not use it, so I want to know what it is. It referenced about 30, um, uh, 30 websites and then gave me a quick summary here. And then um, the the main chat, the main chat, what I have is uh, about trying to figure out how to get a server going and making sure that I have a working robot that can do some of the things that I'll show you um, up ahead. So uh, this is the, the, the agent, uh, sorry, the chat, you can use this for free, uh, same as chat GPT-4. It is kind of slow, so I don't recommend using it, you know, for uh, daily tasks, you're gonna take quite a bit of time. But if you do need something, um, then it will obviously work. Okay. So let's go to the main thing, which is called a agent. And so basically this is what I've been trying to work on for the last couple of weeks on my own, uh, figuring out how to do it on my current server, uh, but they beat me to it. This is basically a uh, agent that can perform uh, robotic tasks. If you think about uh, when Microsoft uh, came up with Autogen uh, or I think there were a couple of other agent robots, basically. And what this does is continuously prompts itself uh, and uses different functions that it has internally. And it will be able to, let's say, you know, do complicated tasks such as, uh, here's some examples of what it did. Uh, if you go to the result, this is one of the results. And basically uh, summarizing the math project um, Right, so unfortunately I can't read that, but 
it did do that. And here's some English version. So it, let's say it created a book uh, for children. There is a result for that. You got a uh, hosted website. So obviously you can go to this website and you'll be able to read it. So it self-hosted it. Um, and here are the pictures. It's a picture book. I, I do like that the pictures are cohesive uh, and like the same kind of style format uh, throughout the story. So that's pretty good. It was, I believe, uh, pushing it to its own image generator um, to do that. So that's pretty good. And then we got some, let's say, websites of uh, driving tour, right? So satellite view or map view. Uh, yeah, not able to read that. Yeah, so it modeled the solar system. So this is a pretty functional, functional uh, view of the solar system from Earth, from the moon. So this is from Earth and it does orbit and everything. You can uh, speed it up, slow it down, anyway. The point is, it's a self-prompting agent uh, that is paid. You get like a free sample. You can try it out in here. I basically asked it to uh, give me the requirements how to install Quen and uh, install it on Linux. Uh, spoiler alert, I want to get off of Windows and I'm on Windows right now. And I want to get to Linux. So how do I do that while well, keeping everything? And so instead of giving me like a walkthrough, it created a website for it. So there, this is a interactive, basically website on all the system requirements for all the models that I requested. The Linux installation, uh, it's like saying that basically you can get to Ubuntu or Pop OS. Um, and then you got installation methods, you got dual boot recommended, virtual machine full replacement, obviously I'm probably going to do like a full replacement uh, with the different drive because I don't want to mess with Linux and Windows on the same system, but, or same drive, but anyway, I'll continue, uh, back up your data. And then this is a checklist. Basically you got AI tools, what they do, uh, prerequisites for them. I believe if we just do Pinocchio, it will be able to get all the prerequisites on Linux as well. Uh, I'm tangenting so hard right now. The thing is, when I saw this website, I was blown away so badly because anything else, I like put this prompt into ChatGPT or Google, and what you'll get is just a small little blurb saying, hey, you know, it's kind of how you do it, but it's too complicated. Go do your own research. Uh, this thing just gave me a whole website with visuals on command lines that I can put in directly and uh, what savings I can get from these command lines, which is amazing. I have, I will look through this again later. And yeah, there's, there's even a troubleshooting website. So basically I'm pretty blown away. Um, again, if you do go over the 1 million contacts window, unfortunately it will suffer. So it will not work. I don't think there's a lot of things that actually go over a million context, but I did try it with like massive math books, uh, like PDF math books and did not go so well. So there is that downside that it can fail. It's not perfect guys, but it's pretty good. It's like the next step forward basically right now. And yeah, so that's a pretty quick look. Um, sorry, I've been a bit busy. The last couple of weeks uh but uh, you know this thing came out and hopefully hopefully i'll get linux installed quickly and show you some interesting things in the next videos so yeah uh thanks for watching please uh somebody quantize this thing get a guff and we'll chat later peace